Here we have to find the dimensions of a rectangle whose area is exactly 1,000 meters squared and whose perimeter is minimized. So our first step is to draw a picture. We've drawn the rectangle. We've labeled the horizontal sides X and the vertical sides Y. Then we need to come up with a couple of equations. The first equation is sometimes referred to by a constraint equation. The constraint equation is based on the given number. So the only number we're given here is the area of the rectangle, it's 1,000. So that's going to serve as our constraint equation. We all remember, of course, that the area of a rectangle is equal to its length multiplied by its width. In this case, the area is 1,000 meters squared. The length can be symbolized by x, and the width is symbolized by y. So there is our constraint equation, but we need a second equation, which is known as the objective. And the objective is the quantity that you're trying to minimize. And in this case, the quantity we're minimizing is the perimeter. So we need an equation for the perimeter. We probably all remember from geometry that the perimeter of a rectangle is twice the length plus twice the width. And so in this case, that will be two times x plus two times y. So those are the two equations. Next, we need to solve our constraint for one of the variables. We can solve it either for x or y. Traditionally, we solve for y. So that's what we'll do here. We'll divide both sides of this equation by x. The x's cancel out on the right-hand side. We might need to swing over here, and now we can see that y would be equal to 1,000 divided by x. And then the next thing we do is we substitute that into our objective. So we're going to take the expression 1,000 divided by x we're going to substitute that in for the y into our objective equation. And so now we have the perimeter equaling 2x plus 2 multiplied by 1,000 divided by x. And what this does is it gets our objective equation into a single variable term. So we are basically in terms of x only right now, which is a good thing. We can proceed by multiplying 2 by 1,000, so we get 2,000 over x. So there is our objective equation with a single variable in it. The next step is to compute the derivative of this equation, but it turns out that it's going to be easier first for us to move the variable to the numerator here. It makes taking the derivative a little bit easier. So we can actually rewrite the perimeter equation as 2x plus 2,000 x to the negative 1. Okay, now it's time to find the derivative, and we do this, recall, because when you have a minimum on a function, the slope of that tangent line is going to equal zero. So basically, in this case, we would say that p prime is equal to zero. That's going to help us locate that minimum value of the perimeter. So here we go. We're going to do p prime. We know the derivative of 2x is just 2. Over here, we have to do a power rule. So we multiply 2,000 by negative 1. That gives us a negative 2,000. And then we have x. And then we subtract 1 from the original power. So this is x to the negative 2. We set this equal to zero. And now we need to solve for x. And one way to solve for x is to multiply every term by x to the positive 2. So we're going to multiply this term by x to the positive 2, this term by x to the positive 2, and even the first term by x to the positive 2. We'll see why this is useful in a moment. So we're going to have 2 times x squared, which is just 2x squared. Here's why it's useful. When you multiply those two variables, you end up adding the powers, right? So negative 2 plus 2 is 0 x to the 0 is just 1, so you have 2,000 times 1, which is just 2,000. So it's 2x squared minus 2,000. On the other side, we still have 0. Proceeding to solve for x, we might divide everybody by 2. So this would become 1x squared minus 1,000 is equal to 0. Add the 1,000 to the other side. And then we're going to take the square root of 1,000. And unfortunately, the square root of 1,000 is not a pretty number, so we'll just call it square root of 1,000 for now. Some of your teachers might want you to simplify that by rewriting it. And to do that, you would split 1,000 into the square root of 100 times the square root of 10. And now the square root of 100 is just 10, so you end up with 10 square root of 10. So that might be a required way for you to write x, but your teacher might also require you to sort of prove that this minimizes the perimeter. And we can do that by employing the second derivative test. As the name implies, to do the second derivative test, we have to compute the second derivative. So we're going to go and calculate p double prime. 
And for us to do that, we're going to need to go back and pick up our p prime. And p prime was equal to 2 minus 2000 x to the negative 2. And so p double prime, let's see, the derivative of 2 would be 0. Another power rule here, we're going to multiply negative 2 by negative 2000. So we get positive 4000. And then we have x to the negative 3. So that's our second derivative. And what we do is we take our critical point, which is this 10 radical 10, and we plug it in. Now you may wish to rewrite this as 4000 over x cubed. And then when you plug in your critical point, you don't actually need to compute the precise value here. What you're trying to do is figure out if this is positive or negative. Hopefully you can see that this will be a positive value. So it's going to be greater than zero. And whenever the second derivative is greater than zero, that means that the curve is concave up. So that sort of shows that at the critical point, the concavity is upward, which indeed minimizes the value for the perimeter. So that concludes according to the second derivative test that the perimeter is minimized. And then again, your teacher might want you to write according to the second derivative test. Now let's just make sure we've answered the question because sometimes they want the dimensions, sometimes they want the actual perimeter. Let's see what they want here. They do want the dimensions. So we have x, we already know that's 10 radical 10. So that's good. That would be in meters. And then y, we can see right next door here is 1000 divided by x. So we would have y is equal to 1000 divided by 10 radical 10. We can simplify that because 1000 divided by 10 is just 100. So you have 100 over square root of 10. We can rationalize the denominator by multiplying it by square root of 10, but also the numerator by the square root of 10. So now we have 100 square root of 10 divided by the square root of 100, right? When you multiply 10 and 10, you get 100. The square root of 100 is just 10. And then finally, 100 divided by 10 reduces down to 10 radical 10. That is also in meters. So look at that. Y is 10 radical 10. X is also 10 radical 10. So indeed, the rectangle is actually a square. So that's kind of a surprising result, perhaps. But whenever you want to minimize the perimeter of a rectangle, then you should design it as a square. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. If you're interested in making a small donation to my cause, I would greatly appreciate it. If not, no worries. I always appreciate you taking the time to watch regardless.